What is going on, managers, and welcome back to another tactical video from me. And we're looking at one of the most successful teams in Germany. Well, the most successful team in Germany, but this year they went on to win the treble. We are looking at Bjorn Heinrich's tactic when he won the treble with Bayern Munich. I'm going to show you what he did, how he and how he set everything up to beat this dominant force that Germany had back in the day. So let's get into the video, check it out, and I'll show you just what we do and how we got through the season. So as you can see there, we did finish top of the table. Bayern have got such a strong side there, and we managed to get Thomas Muller getting 30 goals for this season as well, which is crazy. Joshua Kimmich also got himself 22 assists down there as well. As you can see, we have 96 goals. That is the best in the league and we only conceded 23 as well, which was the best in the league as well. 88 yellow cards in there as well, which is not too bad, but it's a lot accumulated over time. It's averaging nearly more than two a game, so we've got to look at that a little bit more. But as you can see there, top of the group, we actually flew it as well. 18 points clear, goal difference of 73. And he here is the impressive thing with this tactic, guys. If we show you here, we did not lose a game. 28 wins, 6 draws, undefeated. We absolutely smashed this season. We pretty much did a domestic dominance and we won everything. We just had a bit of a falling out in the last 16 of the Champions League. We lost to Atletico Madrid. I'm absolutely gutted about that one, though, but... It it's one of the things that just happens, but we did win the German Super Cup, and we also won the DFB Pokal Cup as well. For show you some of the XGs here, guys, it's going to be absolutely crazy, as you can see there. I've been a 2.82 goals with an expected goals of 2.47, so we're actually expected to score two goals as well, and we're actually nearly getting three goals per game, which is absolutely mental. With the 20 shots we're having per game, shots on target was 41, above average of the league, managing to get 90. 19 dribbles per game as well. Cross completion of 17. We've got some big guys in there as well. As you see probably where Thomas Muller got quite a few of his goals from as well. Pass completion of 86%, which is really high. I'm happy with that. Very, very strong there. And our fouls against 18, just showing the frustrations of the opposition. It's getting that ball down, playing it really well in just not letting them have the ball. As you can see, attacking-wise, everything is above average in the league. That's why we're top of the league and we did, we're undefeated. We absolutely smashed the league with this one as well. And you can see on our defensive ones there, we're conceding a 0 0.68. So it's like zero goals conceded every so often we do. And that is mental considering we scored so many goals. And as you can see from the attacking, it's just counteracting the defense so we're not really having many clearances because the opposition are not getting there we're not getting many blocks because opposition are getting there intercepted exceptions per game is low as well compared to what we were having with the rest of the league as well tackles 177 which is higher than the aries in the league so that's glorious to see tackles attempted per game was 25 which is a little bit less of it but because we're maintaining more possession it doesn't allow them to have the ball so then we're not making the tackles it's more the opposition to try and get the tackles of us but the expected goals is absolutely crazy and it's glorious to see this tactic has worked really well in the bundesliga so hopefully he can be adapted into other saves and other teams as well definitely with a try if you have a look at some of the stats here as well and you will see that possession wise we were 55 percent so we were top with mutual gladback and allsborg as well there and only one percent off the fourth and frankfurt so we were joint top with the percentage we didn't have as many passes completed as the other teams but we did manage to stay up there with the amount of possession that we kept with the ball two shots against was 245 we eliminated that from the opposition not allowing them to have shots on us pretty much 50 shots less than anyone else in the league which equivalents to nearly two shots per game less than everyone else but it is also a very strong strong statistic to have at the back of your tally there just to prove that you are stopping the opposition from getting where you need to be we did have the most shots though with 685 considering that is 164 shots more than anyone else is absolutely ridiculous and just showing you how this tactic is breaking teams down and getting is into the box or in areas to have them shots as well we managed to keep 16 clean sheets as well another joint top effort there with Borussia Dortmund and Leipzig so 16 clean sheets is a very very strong 
asking there as well. So very good to see that although we are attacking very, very strongly, we're also defending quite well as well. So it's nice to see that the mix of the both attacking and defending merging together and creating one hell of a tactic here as well. And we've already seen that we've had only 23 goals conceded the whole season, which is absolutely crazy. And then dribbles per game, 672, which was nice to see as well. Fourth in the league, but we kind of just played the way around just really the tactic just worked really well with players locking in together and just finding the roots and gaps and spaces to allow us to press forward and push on and just do some wonderful things here so we'll get into the tactic in just a sec once again looking at the xg and we saw the cross completion and how many crosses we got in we actually completed 196 crosses which was more than any other club as well it's 28 more crosses than anyone else so our cross completion was 17 percent there which is nice to see so we're happy with that because it's just allowing us to get the ball into the box and just put a threat on there with the plays that are there and once again with scoring the 90 odd goals 177 chances created which is crazy when you look at it that is absolutely bonkers that we are way above anyone else in the league creating the extra chances it's just giving us that extra goal as well already we did say that the shots we had the most shots and we also had the most shots on target with 283 which is 73 more than any other club but 73 shots on target is a lot of shots if you just like calculate how many percentage of that on the xg would go into the back of the net it just shows you why we've scored 90 on goals and no one else is even close to us with getting that many so once again creating the chances making it a little bit harder for the opposition and allowing us to play that ball through and get into space and into areas where we need to be to allow us to have these shots and get these shots off on target where there's a chance of the ball getting in the back of the net so here it is with our patient play where most of our passes have come and most of our passes have come in the final third so we all being a little bit patient as well trying to find the right ball making sure that that we get the good stuff of it as well as you can see here 2851 passes which is 520 passes more than anyone else in the league so we are just showing our dominance when we are on the attacking threat there being a little bit more patient being a little bit more clever with the ball waiting for the right pass finding the right pass find the right space to give us the shot on target which proves it has been happening with the amount of shots on targets we're having and nearly what was it 70 more shots than anyone else in the league on target so it just all adds up attacking wise we are joint top with tackles one ratio so even though we weren't putting that many tackles in getting the ball back because we were keeping the ball more than anything we do have a high percentage of our tackles one with 77 percent which is joint top with Borussia Dortmund as well so when we are putting the tackles in we're damn right doing a good job of it and we are winning the possession back off the opposition just showing you once again if the attacking movement is working well and scoring goals and our defensive duties are then getting the ball off them and playing the ball around, it's going to work really well. So that is absolutely brilliant for me. Once again, showing you the shots against, eliminating it there with 50 shots against us less than anyone else in the league. Like I say, that all adds up as well. Just showing you why it does add up as well there. Shots on against, we only managed 93 shots on us as well. So out of the 245 shots, not even half of them were on target. So we really eliminated them from getting into positions of taking a shot at us and scoring goals. So brilliant to see that as well. Passes attempted against us was the lowest as well with 15,000 nearly 2,000 passes well it's more than 2,000 passes sorry more than anyone else just shows you how well we did gain that ball back and keeping the ball when we needed to as well passes completed against as well so that's kind of the same thing really considering they've attempted the passes we've stopped them from passing as well once again 2,000 more than or well, less than anyone else unbelievable statistic to have passes in the uh, defensive action is 3.55 so we didn't allow them to have it to gain that ball back straight off them kind of like how Yup would play the ball as well and play the game is pushing up get the ball off them and don't let them have possession in there and we only allowed a oh, 1090 nine passes in our final third considering second or 1407 that's a very good statistic to have nearly three over 300 passes less than anyone else in the league so we're gonna be looking at me and saying right tech what is this tactic so let's go through the tactic i will show you right now just exactly what you played and why it works so as you can see, it's a variation of a 4-2-3-1, but I played it as a 4-1-1-3-1. And as you can see here, Kimmich is playing as that ball winning midfielder. But the game 
the tactic was built purely on the physicality of the center halves. Back then, you would have had Dante and Boateng. They were very fast in the day. They might not be fast now as age has caught up with them, but they were very, very fast in the day. So this allowed the defenders to push up because they would have a Neuer, who was still at the club, which is absolutely glorious to see. So we still got Neuer as that sweeper-keeper attack that's mopping up, which allows these players to push up. And Uppermann, Cardo and Delitt are absolutely perfect for this example. They, they really do capture the Boateng and Dante in the team that was back then. They're allowed to push up and get a little bit further up the field purely because we have the sweeper keeper on here. This is why I play them as ball playing defenders as well. It allows them to push out with the ball as well. So in the attacking phase of the game, they're allowed to push up as well as the defensive phase. We have them with a much higher line defensive line so we can push up as well but we'll get into that a little bit more with the speed of these defenders one thing that allowed the center off to do was push up a little bit more with that so as you can see on both of my center offs i have marked tighter which allows us to push up so if there's a center or there's a striker there that's playing potentially as a dlf or a false nine we don't mind up mancano getting forward there and just dropping in and try and get the ball we have got no yeah as that sweeper keeper if the ball's going to go over the top he's going to run out and clear it as well and with up mancano speed of 17 pace and 15 acceleration he can definitely push up there exactly the same with delete with 12 and 13 he's not too bad speed there they can definitely get the ball back when they need to and just allow him to break it down and just stop the attack with noya as their safety net behind him to allow the clearance of the ball once in the middle you'd have a double pivot there as well so normally in the 2013-2014 Kimmich will be played as Yavi Martinez, an absolute fantastic signing for Bayern Munich. And he was kind of a ball-winning midfielder in there that would just drop back, sit back, and allow anyone else to push forward. But when he needed to, he could get forward as well. His distribution of the ball was absolutely phenomenal as well. His, his defensive prowess that he has here. So the double pivot there would be very, very strong. And also you would have Schweinsteiger, kind of that box-to-box -box, the player to get forward there. Also, Schweinsteiger would swap roles as well with the AP who would be Tony Cruz back in the day there. So you could see like a switch around coming through, one drop back, one drop back, whatever the situation or the transition the ball is in or where the ball is on the field, it would allow the players to switch around, drop back and push forward. So they would swap roles in a way, but the main kind of instruction for Schweinsteiger would be to just get the ball play it out and move with it he was allowed to run with the ball as well to push up which then allows you to be into a position of a five attack there and where most of the goals would probably come from Bayern Munich but on Schweinsteiger as it would be then Sebastian would have run with the ball and sure to pass it shorter I just like that from him I know that this actually conflicts with switch the ball to the wide areas but I do like to have shorter passing on them because it allows them to just play the ball a little bit more sensible and as you can see with the passes in the final third just having a bit of a short passing allows us to play that ball through and just wait for the right attack so we have Musiala and Gnagby on the wings back in the day that would have been Ian Robin and Frank Ribery two phenomenal wingers but there was a big issue with them two wingers they were injury prone both of them was so you would see the adaptability of Thomas Muller coming into the team Thomas Muller could fit into that team anywhere luckily we still have him at the Bayern Munich club because he is phenomenal at what he does he's a very underrated player is Thomas Muller so we've got him as an AP here, just doing a job for us, slotting in as an AP role. Because he can play there as well, but he can play on the wing, no issues whatsoever. He could play in the Frank Ribery role or the Iron Robin. We very family famously known as the Trequatista of that the, the name Trequatista comes from Iron uh, from Thomas Muller. So he can't play in them roles, just cuts in. He's the playmaker, just be that player that drifts a player out so the other one can run on. He's just so utilized and got so much about his game that he's absolutely phenomenal. As you can see, he got us 30 goals this season as well. So fair play to him on there. But that is how they would sit and roll. So I've used him as an inverted winger and an inside forward. I am Robin potentially being the inverted winger and Frank Ribery, the inside forward, just getting the ball in, finishing the ball. And they can swap around if they needed to as well. There is definitely options to swap the wingers if they need to mix it up and see there's an attacking advantage on one side, which Robin or Frank Ribery were better at, and they would put him on that side to kind of counteract that defensive weakness of the opposition. So Bayern would kind of close down the ball and kind of stop the roots of how they were playing. And what they potentially did there was just stop the passing lane. That's all they would did. So if they sort of passed, they'd close the space down. And they could do that because obviously the goalkeeper was allowed to just have freedom. 
You don't understand how Manuel Neuer changed goalkeeping for the world right now. If it wasn't for Neuer's sweeper keeper playing with his feet, playing with the ball down, we wouldn't have goalkeepers like Edison, Allison, and stuff like that that could just play football. The fact that Neuer was, I'm going to say, as goalkeeper union, Neuer was robbed of a Ballon d'Or. No other goalkeeper will ever come close because they don't get the credits of a Ballon d'Or. Neuer should have won that Ballon d'Or that year that he got nominated for the Ballon d'Or. He should have won it. No ifs, no buts. He was absolutely phenomenal. And he redefined goalkeeping. And that is just what you have had him to do as well. Just be that sweeper keeper that allowed him to play the ball out. Play that more aggressive style of football and just be aggressive with his decision making because he knew he was that good to make them decisions he was an absolute phenomenal goalkeeper and he changed the revolutionary of goalkeeping in my eyes so we're going to have a look a little bit more of how we set up and how we go as well as you can see we do have alfonso davies and pavard so by me it will kind of play on a counter-attacking football really like getting the ball back off the opposition and then pushing and getting forward so you can see that i've got alfonso david and pavard both on wing backs as well so that gets the ball forward when they need to and just pushes up as well i haven't got them on overlap because with overlap if i go over here guys if i put overlap just have a look at what overlap says look for overlap instructions on players on the left flank to hold on to the ball and look for an overlapping player support most likely we're going to do fall back i don't want them to hold the ball up i want them to just get forward we're counter-attacking just push forward and get into that attacking role let the fullbacks get involved into the game absolutely but didn't want them holding the ball up if there was a pass on pass the ball don't wait for that overlap so we didn't put overlap on but because we've got wing backs on they do get forward and get into the attacking play so we held off with the overlap. We played it a little bit shorter with a slightly higher tempo and we ran at the defense. And we had low crosses purely because I had low crosses on. We didn't have the likes of Mandzukic, who would be the striker back then. We have Sadio Mane, who he can enter the ball, but he's not the tallest of guys to enter the ball. Near is uh, Gnagby or Musiala. So we've kind of gone for a low cross on this one, purely because it works for us better, because we haven't got the taller players. But I would imagine back in the day, Bayern would play a more over-the-top high ball for the likes of Mandzukic, Muller, and stuff like that into the box. So we have gone short low on this one, but I could imagine Bayern playing a bit of a mixed bag of crosses but that's just how we have because we've got smaller players so when we go to our transition we counter press and we counter pretty much get the ball back off them thank you and push to get the ball forward as quickly as possible so we get off them push them and we go pretty much how most teams in this kind of era of football started to doing that as well you would notice that like when we do like 2010s kind of tactics you are seeing a very similarity of four two three ones because it was kind of what was working in the system it was changing from that four to four four two to two striker formations to that one striker formation kind of rolling in so you'll see a little bit of a uh, similarity with tactics just a little bit changes of how they are run also we have throw it long if you've never seen manuel neuer throw a ball go youtube manuel neuer throwing a ball that man could throw it pretty much the length of the field it's absolutely ridiculous so we're going to take full advantage of his throwing by throwing it long as well and here becomes the high press and the high line of engagement the much higher line as you can see in our back for their pavard Matthias De Ligt, Upperman Carno, Alfonso Davies, all absolutely fast, rapid players. And we do have Manuel Neuer as that sweeper-keeper attack, pushing up. If the ball goes over the top, we're going to get it straight off them and play it out. So them pushing up high doesn't really matter because they are so fast, they can track back and get the ball back. And if they can't get the ball back, the ball's got to go that far over the top. The Manuel Neuer will mop that up and clean it up and just knock it out. So that is kind of what we have gone for here, guys. So a few of the player instructions here as well. We just left the inside winger as normal. Just dribble more, cut inside with the ball and get further forward. Thomas Moore is exactly the same. Shoot less often, dribble more and take more risks. And then we have Gnabby who I've just had as an inside forward. But I made him stay a little bit wider there. Just to be a little bit more of a danger to push out and just drag a few players out as well to the wing. To create a little bit more space for Mane and Muller to just be around that's pretty much all we've got as well we do have stay wider on alfonso davis and tackle order just because inverted winger is going to cut in so he's allowed to have more space up here as well there and also pavard has stay wide and tackle order to get further forward as well and that pretty much is the tactic guys as you can see we went on an unbelievable run here 
just absolutely dominating. We won the Super Cup 5-2 against Leipzig as well. Then we just went on an unreal run. As you can see, Mutant Gladbach, Bochum, Wolfsburg, uh, Union Berlin, Stuttgart. Drew with it by Leverkusen. Beat Dortmund 6-1 away from home. 6-1. That would be... We would be crowded as kings there, beating Dortmund 6-1. Did really well in the Champions League as well. We did only lose to Salzburg away from home. 4-3. Very good game. Very good game. Uh, Celtic, we lost to away from home. So they celebrated that as a cup final. Hoover Berlin, uh, winner Brenner. Schalke, 3-0, 4 nils. Freiburg, 4 nil. Leipzig, 3 nil. Cologne, 3-1. Frankfurt, 4-1. Union Berlin again, 5-2. Wolfsburg, 2 nil. Bochum, 5-2. The results are crazy. Gladbach, 3 nil. It stuck guard 2-0. Then we did lose, unfortunately, in the Champions League. We got a 2-2 away from home, which for oh, great result. We're going to win this now because home legs is going to be fine. Couldn't score a goal for some reason. You know when you just have that day on it, football manager, and you're like, God damn it, I wanted this as a good video for the Champions League as well. It wasn't meant to be. Osborg, 4-0. Uh, Dortmund, we got six points off when he beat him 2-0. I think they scored one goal in the two games from us. Unbelievable results there as well. Uh, Hanover in the quarterfinals we beat 3-0 Mainz 3-0 Hofer Berlin 3-1 uh, Gladbach 5-2 in the semi-final of the cup as well 5-1 against Schalke 2-0 against Leipzig 1-0 against Cologne and then 2-0 in the Pokal final so let's show you a couple of goals so you can see what is going on, how we score the goals, and how the game is played. So we're going to get the ball with Tal on the wing here, changing it up as well, bringing some of the youth players in. Goes all the way through, gets a little bit lucky with the deflection there, but that is the inverted winger that is pushing in, try and get the ball through. Unfortunately, we concede from set pieces, so if you're going to concede, at least concede from set pieces. Don't know what number 41 is doing there, just leaving the ball, not, not even bothered for it, but Grevenberg does pick that ball and becoming that box to box there. Two promoting gain involved as well. Unbelievable ball through to Thomas Muller, as you can see there as well, the inverted winger finding the right pass as well. We got, well, sorry, the inside forward staying a little bit wider, dragging it out and making them gaps for him. It's Gravenberg yet again, two promoting playing out wide as Tal gets the ball through. Lovely touch for him and just rifles the ball in. Once again, that inside forward staying out wide drags that player out and just allows that passing movement to come through finding the gaps for the players finding it through it's thomas baller picks up plays a great ball over kings of Coman does get a little bit lucky there but the finish is absolutely wow let's get down this right hand side we showed a lot of success down this right hand side using the chance of the inverted like inside forward there. Lovely play as well. Kingsley Coman now cutting inside, being part of the strike force there. It's wonderful to see. Great stuff. We absolutely dominated as well. A 3xG, 24 shots, 14 on target with a 52% possession. Unbelievable scenes. So in the Pokal Cup final, we put a lot of pressure on Leipzig. We got that ball back from Coman, pushing back there. Manny with a great ball through. Finding Thomas Muller, who just hits it first time, overlapping as the AP. He has got shoot less often, but when he's in that position, he's He's not going to not shoot, if you get what I mean there. And Sane brings that ball through. Gets a little bit lucky with the deflection. Thomas Muller being that advanced playmaker yet again. Finding the ball through as Madureo whacks that ball in as our wing back there. Glorious to see. An absolutely fantastic result for us. And that's just the tactic, guys. I hope you enjoyed the Ups tactic here. If you do download it, let me know how you get on. The link's in the description will be down below. And if you have liked it, make sure you hit a like and Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're so close to 800, guys. It's unbelievable. It's blowing my mind. You guys have been absolutely phenomenal. I love every single one of you. If you want to see me doing more live action, which you'll be seeing me live over at Twitch, .twitch twitch.tv forward slash ticker 147. You'll see me do my live save over there where we just have a little bit of fun and just mix and match with tactics. But guys, thank you very much for clicking on this video. It means absolute world to me. You spend a little bit of part of your day checking out my content. I'll catch you all next time. Much love and bye-bye.